Hey, it's me, the mouth of the sound, Jimmy Hart. Hey, check out my new tag team, baby, Money and the Pharaoh. Hey, Jimmy, don't forget to tell them about Long Island's number one pro wrestling broadcast. Well, you know what I would, but you already did it. It's Monty and the Pharaoh. The Monty and Pharaoh show. Monty and Pharaoh, bro. Monty and the Pharaoh. The Monty and the Pharaoh. You've got the future Hall of Famer, that rocker, Marty Gennetti, MJ in the house, and I'm sitting here with two more future Hall of Famers, Monty and the Pharaoh. We're doing that stuff and we're going to rock it. Monty and the Pharaoh. It's Monty and the Pharaoh. 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 And Monty and the Pharaoh. Oh, is it Monty and the Pharaoh? Yeah. Monty and the Pharaoh. Monty and the Pharaoh. Hey, cut <laughs> music. When you want the best in professional wrestling, Long Island, there's only one place you're going to get it right here. Monty and the Pharaoh. <laughs> now, that's not just the coolest, and that's not just the best. That, my friends, is just <laughs> incredible. <laughs> Monty and the Pharaoh. Duh. Hey! Not get a call off the Russian nightmare! And you're watching the number one show on Long Island with Monty and the Pharaoh. Ah! It's pretty obvious that Sandman is just the way he's always been. Can I, can, could you do me a favor, Sandman? Could you let everybody see your socks that you... <laughs> He doesn't have any shoes on! I mean, literally! I know, dude, this place is so nice. I just snuggled right in, shoes off, put some popcorn in the microwave. The mask went flying, the shoes came off. I'm like, what's going on? Hey, here? the couch is comfy this yeah, time. The pipe How clean? Not sitting in a fold up metal chair. <laughs> <laughs> All right, welcome back to Long Island's number one pro wrestling broadcast, Monty Nefaro, seen only here at Indie Music TV in Ron Konkuma, Long Island. Thanks. Our honored guests, uh, <laughs> Sandman and Shane Douglas, are in studio. So you guys have like moved up in the world, You're like like George Jefferson. Right? You're moving on We're up. We're moving here on up. World. You're yes. welcome. <laughs> And here I was, I thought he was going to break into song, you know. <laughs> Sandman sings Moving On Up. <laughs> and Wheezy would have loved it. Wheezy would have loved it. I mean, it blows my mind that, we're, that we have our news agencies blatantly lying to us. So, you know, for someone who's being skeptical of this whole COVID thing, can you blame me for being skeptical? It's up, it's down, it's in, it's out, it's black, it's white, it's, it's everything and nothing. <laughs> uh, on, the, on the subject of sanitizing, now Matt, I don't know if you can get a shot of this, but it's pretty obvious that Sandman is just the way he's always been. Can I, can, can you do me a favor, Sandman? Could you let everybody see your socks that you, you he doesn't have any shoes on! I mean, literally! I know, dude, this place is so nice, I just snuggled right in, shoes off, put some popcorn in the microwave. The mask went flying, the shoes came off, I'm like, what's going on? Hey, here? the couch is comfy this yeah, time. The pipe, how clean? Not sitting in a fold-up metal chair. <laughs> Animal. From the Road Warriors, any thoughts on uh, Animal and his passing while we, I got you guys here? Yeah, I, I, I got the text early that morning. <laughs> And immediately jumped on the internet thinking, this has to be bull****. Mm. Um, and I texted his wife, Kim, and uh, several hours went by, so I sort of started breathing easier, you know. And about three hours later, she texted, I, I texted her, please tell me this is bull****. And uh, she texted back, it isn't. Mm. Uh, you know, I, I've known Joe for 30-plus years. Uh, used to travel together uh, back in the day. Uh, you know, I'd be like the little gremlins, like digging at him you know, all day long, just to entertain myself, right, until he'd snap and threaten to break my neck or something. <laughs> uh, you know, but he, just just a good dude. Uh, you know, he he was a staunch Christian. Uh, you know, especially as he, as he got older. Um, you know, found a great wife in Kim, uh, a real sweetheart. And then to hear that, and I've I, you know I've heard different things. I've never 
really dug into it. Because in my head, with all these guys and friends of ours that are dying and have died, in my head, I have them on a Japan tour. You know, so like they'll, they'll be coming back from Japan soon. Mm. Uh, you know, so I haven't really dug into it, but I heard heart i heard cancer i've heard so many different things and again how the internet that we're talking about the internet with the rumor mill you don't really know what it is or is it all i know is my friend's gone mm. and uh yeah i mean you talk about one of the iconic wrestlers right from the from the glory years uh the road warriors when that iron man would hit and they come Fuck, that curtain place and where it electricity the what sand man on out? no the place would explode what was i just i was just watching a documentary were they on vice documentary or something they were i was on hold oh, whatever it was yes, it was yeah. good yeah dude yeah. oh dude because i didn't i didn't get to see a lot of them because dude I didn't, until i got cable in like 1979 you know what i'm saying and then and i don't know but i didn't know him i i didn't know the dude when when i was wrestling i only met him afterwards when i'd see him at autograph signings all the time yeah. yeah, he was cool. Well, speaking of, like, icons, right, you guys, you chose a career, um, which certainly it could go in a tanker fairly quickly, or you could be at the level of you guys where you, you're such an influence. How does it feel like after all this time that thousands and thousands of people want your autograph? They still want to talk to you. But I should have appreciated it more when I was doing it. <laughs> yeah. You know, literally, it's the first thing that comes to my head. Yeah, absolutely. It blows my mind. You know, I... Uh, when I was coming into wrestling, I was looking up at, you know, the Bruno San Martinos and the Harley races. And I mean, just these, like, wow. And, you know, they have had the pleasure of learning from them and working on shows with them and, and just getting to know them. Uh, and, and you see, as you know, the Sands of Time Bass, there will come a time, hopefully way down the road, where he and I will be gone. Uh, for me, personally, I'm, I'm sure for all of us, to have come into this business, you don't even have any inkling that you can have a career, let alone have a long career. And then beyond that, that anybody remembers anything that I did, uh, like to me, it still blows my mind. Like we were on, on the, the signing earlier and I told, you know, said what message to the fans, I said thank you, you know, for, for allowing me, this idiot from New Brighton, Pennsylvania to have had a career. Uh, and I've loved every second of it. You know, the, the side of the business is the side of the business. But, you know, I, I don't see Hack for a year. We see each other. It's always a hug. Hey, we we'll catch up. We'll go, you know. Right where we left off. Yeah, right where we left off. You know, it's a great fraternity. Keep calling him that WCW name. It's <laughs> does it, does it's it, driving me well, we always call Dude, him that. that's my name. I know it is. My I grandparents know, call me that. <laughs> Parents. <laughs> my kids. I know, I, I get my it. oldest <laughs> boys. The only one that does it is I can't get my 12-year-old to call me Hack. He's still calling me is, dad. Is it a little bit? <laughs> oh, but my grandson and my granddaughter Hack. Right. Yeah, but right. He, well, well, he's right. only nine months right. old, but he, uh, we hacked to him, and yeah. I already am now. Yeah, I get so it. So they call him, like, Hack Jr.? Hack. Nah. No. He's Hack got Junior, right? He's Hack got Bill Jr. Watts mitts, this kid. Nine months old. He's so nine months old. He doesn't bars. have skinny kids' fingers. I'll show you. This, okay. this kid's got free. Did, you get him a cane yet? Cute. So does it hurt more that you have this extended family when all these friends are passing away like this? I mean, obviously, every it hurts when you have all sorts no, of... Dude, you have this big, I, long family. I right? was over... I, I, I've been immune to my friends dying ever since we went through that span of those five years and like oh. 30 dudes and stuff, dude. I just, I, I, I no emotion comes to me anymore. Really? Wow. Because it's been, it was so prevalent for a long time, you, you know, know what I'm saying? It's just like, you know, oh, you know dude, I'm, I'm just immune to it. Even if it's somebody from high school that I was friends with, and, you know, because, you know, I'm at my, you know, I went to, I graduated in like 81, and those people were starting to die, I'm like, ah. Eh. You know, I'm just, I'm immune to death. You guys and it's because of that. WCW, Nash is walking up to me in the hallway one day. And he goes, he goes, they're not, they don't want, they, you're not using the Sandman name. They're worried about getting sued. He goes, what do you want to be called? I said, hack. He goes, okay. Literally, it was like a 10, <laughs> no, 10 was, 15 second conversation. That was difficult. What was that, because of Metallica with Sandman? No, it was because, it, yeah, I own, and I proved him that I own, but they're worried about Sandman comic book and Sandman fucking concrete company in California suing them. If they pay you, to, you know, not to use Sandman, who gets right? It doesn't really matter. You, you're, you're the gimmick anyway. Yeah, but it would have been nice. It would have been nice to, yes, and they signed a 750000 dollars deal with them. It would have been nice to have the same wrestling name pretty much your whole career. Yeah, yes. You know what I mean? Yes. There's not a lot of guys can say that. You know, no. you know what I mean? He had a 30-year career, and you had the same name the whole time. And on booking level, you were coming in as a ECW legend. I mean, to me, it was I was I was like, why is he why is he not called Sandman? 
Oh, what are you going to do? Oh, and then they made it hardcore hack, which I hated, because there was hardcore That's, holly. See, I hated That's that complaint really, nothing happened. Yeah. You never realized that you actually broke an ECW broke Pitbull number two's neck is that so is there some kind of discrepancy going on whether it was real or you or I was real I mean <laughs> oh it was real dude the halo and everything funny thing about that was that he all day long you know I was going to do a single arm single drop DDT and he kept telling me he's going to take it like a DDT and I said I kept telling him no because my weight's going to pull you off Instead of coming straight, you're going to get pulled to a side and cause what's called a Jefferson fracture. Well, he kept saying it all day long, even though I would tell him the reason is not. I figured he was f***ing with me. So I come off the ropes in the, later in the night and give it to him. And instead of getting that boom bump, you know, that bounce bump, it was like a thunk, like it hit in concrete. And I looked over and I saw Gary roll into the apron. It looked like he was selling. Mm. And later that night in the dressing room, he's going, I got a kink in my neck. And he keeps jerking his neck around, right? So Monday morning, Todd Gordon calls me and said, you hear about Gary? I said, no. He said, he's in surgery right now. You broke his neck. I said, Cause Todd and I used to always rib each other, right? Mm -hmm. I said, Todd, I ain't falling for it. I said, he was jerking his neck all over the place Friday, Saturday night at the building. He's fine. So I didn't buy it the whole week until like, the next week we get to, to work. right? Walk in. <laughs> Gary's got this thing sc yeah. screwed into his skull. Ooh. And I was like, oh, my eyeballs went boing, boing, boing. Like, holy <laughs> He had a bad fracture, too. And they, the doctors told him had he not had such a thick strong neck that it would have killed him or crippled him you know one of the two and uh, uh dude i broke my c4 in half in the match with cactus shack totally my fault um it's spot that i dreamt of doing with the table or whatever but uh, i got, got, got cracked by the chiropractor the next day and russ and russ was wrestling the next weekend wow didn't know it until a couple years later when I got hurt in that junkyard match in WCW. Went to the hospital. They gave me a CAT scan. I told them, I, I, I said, they, they, they thought my neck was broken right away. I'm like, dude, I, my, I've been hurt worse than this. My neck's not broken. So finally, by about 6 a.m. in the morning after the MRI, they're like, yeah, you're right. This was broken like five to ten years ago. <laughs> when I was getting off the Oxycontin in the hospital, hmm. I'm in there for like three weeks, and I'm watching TV one day, and all of a sudden, I thought I was having a stroke. My whole body, I went blind. My whole body stayed and out and right after this happened like a seizure the nurse looked at me and she said what the hell was that and I said you tell me well they started running tests and everything and after four or five days of test biopsies MRIs CAT scans x-rays the doctor came in and said when did you break your neck I said I never broke my neck he said no you've had a broken neck he said the only thing that causes this is infection surgery or broken neck I said well had to be the infection because I never had surgery I never broke my neck so they went down and same thing, put you in the MRI machine specifically for the neck now. Came back and said, sure enough, bilateral fracture of C3. And, but it, like I always told people, the doctor then and told people since, in wrestling, your neck and back are always sore. Yeah, sure. They're both hurting me right now a little bit. Right, right. You know what I mean? It's constant right. pain. It'll be that way for the rest of your life. You know, On a cold, that, rainy you, day, forget do, it. Do you get up every morning in a lot of pain? Is that no, you? no, no, because I'm, I'm such my, I have such a sedentary life right now. And it's not like I ain't hopping out of bed like I used to. You know what I mean? Now it's more like, <laughs> yeah. Pull yeah. a chair over, careful, push Sam, up man. on that. Careful. Yeah. <laughs> Take oh, yeah. your time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> On the, uh, very controversial crucifixion angle, obviously, between Raven and the Sandman. Uh, Shane, is it true you brought Kurt Angle to this uh, this particular event where this happened? I didn't bring him. He, uh, how that happened was he had been offered, I think, a million dollars to do one appearance for for WWF. Okay. And turned them down because he had just come off the Olympics with the gold medal. I think he, you know, he, the guy got screwed. Like he wasn't one of those guys that like cashed in and made big money from it. Mm -hmm. But he was still real guarded about his, part, his you know, his, his image at the time. Yeah. I connected to him through Mark Madden at okay. Paul's behest, and and I spoke to him on the phone. It was very nice, and he said, uh, "I just got to be very careful." He said, "I can't be involved in any kind of crazy or whatever because." And I got it right. You know, the guy's trying to build a career. So we come to the building. And this happens, and Paul, all I heard was like. Paul Heyman's running down the stairs from the crow's nest as fast as he can. He said, you better get up here right away. Kurt's losing his mind. Well, I didn't know what was going on. I said, over what? And he pointed at me. I thought I went, oh, all right. Because I promised him that would happen, right? So uh, he came down, and, and, and he was hot. But he, you know, once we explained to him and everything, he was fine. He sort of calmed down a bit from there. Uh, you know, but Kurt was, uh, I just saw him a few weeks ago. He's always been very gracious, uh, very easy to talk with. 
reasonable. Um, and he was that he was hot you, again. You can understand, but he uh, you know he understood. And then like the, the part that like could would never happen today. We didn't want that leaking out to hurt him. Mm-hmm. So we pulled all the uh, blackjack and Linda Rufo and Bill and uh, George and Bill After. All, you know, pulled everybody back. Uh, George Tahinas and explained to them and said, you know, please. And they didn't go out for a while. I mean, those pictures stayed kayfabe for a while. And, you know, I think once Kurt saw that, like, he was, I think, uh, even more relieved that, you know, that we were living up to our word. And uh, just one of those. But, again, that, it, the whole thing happened over the freedom that we had in ECW. Sure. Right? Like, Hack and, 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 uh, uh, and Scotty were in charge of their angle. Uh, I was in charge of my stuff, whoever I was working with. And, you know, so something like that happens. That's how we always ran every show. Paul mm-hmm. would give you a finish, and, and you, you might get that five minutes before match time. And the rest of it was up to you. Did you five of eight, dude? He doesn't even have the card put together yet. It sounds. True. True. We were the only company that ever advertised just people. Didn't even advertise matches, dude. Right. right. Pull yeah. Well, let me ask you this: fly. like in today's wrestling, right? I guess they got it from the movies, but they show you every match that's going to be on before you. Isn't there something lost with that whole thing? Like, wouldn't you rather just be like, don't know it? Like, for example. I got a choice of watching some old movie I've seen a hundred times, or you know, AEW comes on. AEW shows their whole lineup, and I'm like, forget it, not watching this crap tonight. Moving on. They tip their hands right at the beginning of the show. Here's everything you're going to see. I, I prefer surprise. Right. right. Let me have a couple of surprises. Vince McMahon in the old days used to say, on this show you're going to see Mil Mascaris. He didn't say who he's fighting. Right. You're going to see him. Yeah. You know, so that's all changed too. Uh, just out of curiosity, Shane, did the did the crucifixion angle make you feel uncomfortable at all? No. Sam, were you like, yeah, this is the greatest thing ever. Let's do this. He, I love it. He rules. I mean, come on. I love <laughs> it, dude. Rules. Dude, you're always looking for to be the first to do something. Sure. You know what I mean? Cigarette, sure. cane, beer, five year old kid in the sure. ring, dude. You look always looking for something to be the first something, dude. Right. And what so, happened six months later? They did it they on did WWE. It on <laughs> Thank you. Not as good as you. So cold and steal my. I mean, dude, I went out there and drank a six pack of my answer, smashed it on my head, and bled before I got into the ring. By the way, were those small barrels? <laughs> Camel non filter. Uh, the lawyer who is representing a lot of the past WWE stars that have Ooh. passed away is now bringing a court case to the Supreme Court against the WWE. Really? For brain damage against all these wrestlers. I guess they went into Stuka's brain. Are you okay? What's he talking about? <laughs> What do you guys feel about that? It went into Snooker's brain. I didn't join it. He enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. it was, you go. He, dude, I was at that company for a, short, for a short time, you know what I'm saying? And I was doing a lot of <laughs> like that, you know what I'm saying? So to me, it, well, one, I want to get in this Hall of Fame someday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, if you, yeah. and if you get on the lawsuit, there's no chance of that, right, dude. Right. And two, but I just wasn't there long enough. You know, if I had my whole career there, it was ECW, maybe. Right. But, well, how did... How do you feel about that? With you know, Vince seems to be bearing the brunt of every wrestler who's wrestled in the last forty years. What about the guys? Well, of who course, spend... because he's the one with all the money. But what about the guys who spend most of their career with guys like Crockett and WCW? I don't know. So that's why me, that's like me. That's why I don't feel that I really should be part right. of it. Right? Why should Vince be responsible for guys who never even got here? Well, or some the, of them. The flip side of that would be if <laughs> I own a business and I sell you that business, and there's a bunch of liens against that business, you just bought the liens okay. as well. Um, Vince downloads all the. Uh, but the where does catalog. the NWA sit? Because WCW he purchased, but the NWA still exists, yeah. and most of those guys work for the NWA that I'm speaking of. Yeah. You know, these but guys it, from a long time ago. But from a court, is it, do they just own the name, or is it a, 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 is it any kind of corporate? That's a great question. I, I don't what do you know, mean that no. NWA still exists? It still exists. It does. It's talking about NWA Power, which doesn't. Yeah, really I don't even know the National Wrestling Alliance Corbin. title is still out there. Oh, oh that was that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's oh, okay. still out there yeah. on a very small it. scale, but it still does exist. That's Ch- is that Chicago? I'm not sure. What, no, what I think it? in Atlanta they're doing it. Where, right? Is that where they're I based so. out of? But don't hold me to it. I'm not it an looks, expert it, on it. it, it, it the, the visual look of the show looks like the old 10th and Techwood studio. It, it, it's like you're watching George Never see what channels it a little bit. Well, it was on YouTube. But I don't think it's going anymore. I'm not sure. Crushed it. They lost yeah. their momentum, and I haven't seen them on recently. So, but it was interesting. It was old school. It was what, like watching an old Florida Championship Wrestling show or something like oh, that. Wow. Very Florida interesting. Championship Wrestling. I kind baby. of dug it. You know, I thought it was speaking cool. of Vince, he's getting older, right? Oh yeah. You know, you know, sooner or later that time is going to come, I guess. If uh, either one of you had to, you know, 
talk at his funeral or speak at his funeral, wow. what would you say about him? I'd say thanks, dude. <laughs> me? I would say thanks. Thanks, dude. Yeah, thanks. So let me live, that helped me live my life stream. It's there awesome. you go. There Shane? You go. Well, I mean, you can't argue with success, right? I mean, the guy, no promoter previous to Vince McMahon could have ever imagined the business to the level he took it. Mm. Uh, to be a publicly traded company, to be making billions of dollars with no fans, and you know, it's, it, he's really pulled a rabbit out of a hat with this. Um, but you know, I, I think, it, it, in full honesty, you'd have to give both sides of that, right? I mean, it, he did incredible stuff with the business. The, the one thing that I have, I, I take umbrage with Vince on, is I remember him saying to me in, in conversations in several interviews before and after. I'm sure most of the other guys in the dressing room at different times. That his his goal in taking over the business from his dad, buying it from his dad, was he wanted to cha transform it and bring it into the 20th century then, right? Uh, uh, I, I guess in, implying that it was still being run like the 19th century. And he did. He succeeded beyond anybody's wildest dreams, except the, the talent is still being paid in the same manner it was being paid back in those dark ages of wrestling. Mm. Uh, you know, I, I still have my old contracts and I pulled them out last week for my podcast and there's a clause in there that I'm paraphrasing, uh, that you could work for any other promotion on the planet except. except, and it listed all like New Japan, All Japan, ECW, WCW, any place you could make a living. Right. Um, it, it, when you look at it, the IRS has 20 or 21 criteria. If you wanted to file your taxes as an independent contractor. You have to meet all 21 of those. 19 out of, or 20 out of 21, no good. you're not an independent contractor. So uh, to me, a real independent contractor would be able to say, hey, Vince, next Monday's my kid's 21st birthday. I really want to be there, so I won't be here next Monday. And then the week after that, I'm going to fly down and hang out with my friends down on AEW. And while I'm there, I might as well pick up a paycheck and uh, perform for them. That would be a true independent contractor. I think we all know the joke of what would happen if you try to pull Well, you like could that. have, but then he would just terminate his agreement with you. Bingo, right? So, you know, your contract would be ended. Um, but as soon as you accept it, from the way I interpret it, again, I'm no attorney, but with the way I interpret those 21 criteria is that, first of all, like six of them don't even loosely apply to the loosest interpretation of the door business. But as a house painter, if I decide to come paint your house today, you can't tell me I can't go paint his house tomorrow or hacks the day after that. Right. The, the uh, stuff that's really blowing my mind right now is that any kid, anybody, uh, they should all be firing their attorneys for having signed a contract that gives Vince the rights to their legal name. Uh, that is mind blowing to me. What? Yeah, they, they, Vince well, what? here. So if The Rock goes to Hollywood and becomes exponentially bigger than he was in WWF, not that he wasn't big in WWF, but does that now give Vince the rights to forever to say, well, I made you famous, so all that money you're making, I should get a cut of that. So, from what I understand, he does get a cut of when he was being presented as The Rock. When he goes off as Dwayne Johnson, he's off on his own. You know, like Vince is claiming that because of their likeness. Well, I can't change my face. I can't go out of, the, out of Vince's building and contort my face or put a mask on, uh, you know, or put the old Mark, Groucho Marx glasses on. Uh, I'm Troy Martin. This is what he looks like. And so if I go out and do some side business and make money, does that give him rights to take that money because he owns my likeness? Uh, again, we're just in a gray area, you mm -hmm. know, that I think it really has to be dug into and defined. They're going to always find it on their side, right? Obviously, any, every business would. That's not yeah, but it is your that. face. Right. So, but until it... <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, it is your face. I and, mean, what the f***? You know, and, and stop and think in this business, right? I mean, there is one place, really, to make uh, that, that huge living like that and get that kind of huge exposure. So, if you walk in there and they say, well, you know, I want your firstborn child. Uh, at some... Like, where, where do you say yes or no? Any, any kid that I knew coming into business, me included, would have given our eye teeth to get into the business, right? Uh, we loved it so much. And so you sign away anything just to get in. Sign away anything just to get in. Is it fair to say that now there's two options? Because some of the people, the wrestlers in AEW, are making mad money. Yeah. So are there two options now? Have yeah, you... but for a lot of years there wasn't. Correct. You know what I mean? Until no, very I mean, recently in AEW. Yeah, of course. Has AEW arrived in your guys' eyes? Are they going to be I don't know. It doesn't sound like it to me. When he was telling me the ratings yeah, I, earlier, so I don't okay. know. The ratings don't sound that great. Well, WWE announced even if COVID cancels, and I don't know how true it is, they are going to stop doing house shows. Right. 
Which is it's, it's a this crazy is sad. Wait, what? Yeah, they're going to stop yeah. doing house shows. This is sad, man. This is they're sad. just going to do live pay per views and live raws and live smackdowns. That's it. Yeah. This is. Are you? F- killed Marianne. Why? Well, it's killing house shows. I didn't know. It's that. I didn't know. Who is the Mount Rushmore, in your guys' opinion, each of you, the Mount Rushmore of ECW? Give me four names. I, I guess don't know, like us two, Van Dam and Dreamer and Sabu. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Someone's going to have to be off that. There's four. Yeah. It's got to be four. So who All right, while well, Shane's off, it'll be me, <laughs> Dreamer, <laughs> Sabu, and Van Dam. Oh, man. <laughs> The greatest DC what else am I supposed ever? to say right now? <laughs> okay. No, I know. I, I, Shane I'm next. See, I'm just curious. Just I, curious. I see that I'm the mountain. So okay. their, their faces are on my mountain. <laughs> okay. No, okay. I, I, I have Funk on there uh, because Funk brought the legitimacy to it. Funk? Sabu. Right. Sabu. I'd have Hack on there because these guys were all so integral to like the, the, the brand itself. Funk, right? Sabu, Sandman. Okay. And beyond that, I think you have to have... You know, a baby face, like uh, I'm guessing, like a, a Tommy Dreamer that represents that. Okay. Uh, okay. You know, it, it's. And, that, the, and he was a, an original, too. Like yeah. an original, original, like me. Okay. Yeah, because yeah, without Funk, I mean, Funk was like the, 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 the yeah. engine of the place for the first year, right? We were all following his lead. Yeah, it was um, interesting. Yeah. Oh, God, I was so green.